Hi everybody and welcome back to my big backyard. Uh, today I could do what everybody's doing these days and I could go through all of my seeds, every single seed that I have that I'm going to plant this year. And while I like to watch videos like that because I'm a crazy person, I know that not everybody wants to sit through that. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go over just the few things that I am using right now. The things that I'm either going to do a winter sowing project on or just sprinkle outside and winter sow in my garden. So I'm going to show you those. I'm going to plant up a tray full of winter sowing stuff and then I'm going to take the rest out to the garden and plant them. Enjoy! Okay, so I finally had a chance to sort through my seeds and decide which things I should maybe winter sow. And how I decided that was it was based on whether they needed a, either a cold stratification period or if they're the type of plant that just reseeds itself and comes up every year. I figured those are the plants that would do well at winter sowing because that's how the seeds grow. They just pop up every year when they're ready. Um, I have pictures of some of them because I have the seed packets and some of them I don't have any pictures of because I did a seed swap with a friend this morning so all I have is these lovely Ziploc bags that we put them in. So I will, if I can, I will pop pictures up on the screen when I edit this, but if not, well then not. So one of the things that I was going to winter sow is all of my echinacea plants. I have a variety of different echinaceas and none of them had pictures on the seed packets but echinacea is cone flower and I have the purple cone flower, Cheyenne spirit cone flower, mellow yellow, um, a white version, and the green twister cone flower and those I decided to winter sow. Um, typically people would just sprinkle them in their garden but one of the problems I have with things that I sprinkle in my garden or in my meadow and I hope to grow is that later on I go back and I spray them as weeds or pull them up and I forget that they're actual plants so to solve that problem this year anything that I plant out in my actual garden I'm gonna mark with these survey flags so hopefully I don't decide to get rid of it later on but um, slightly unconventionally here I have my winter sewing tray. Oops, there we go. Um, I'm gonna winter sew everything in peat pellets in this tray. I know most people with their winter sewing projects say, oh, use milk jugs, etc." Well, I don't have any milk jugs. I don't drink milk. I don't have piles of takeout containers or a bunch of trash that I can use. So I decided to use the peat pellets. One advantage to using the peat pellets is that a lot of the things that I'm sowing this year, um, they don't like to have their roots disturbed when they're planted. So in this tray, I'm gonna be putting poppies. So I have this giant rattle poppy, florist pepper box poppy, amazing gray poppies, tangerine gem poppies. I also have, um, a Hungarian blue bread seed poppy, um, some American Legion poppies, and some Shirley blend corn poppies. Now, not all of those really need to be sewn like this, but this is just one way for me to put some in a container, and then at least I know that some sprouted, and then I can take these and plant them out there later on, and I don't have to worry about did they even grow or not. These I know for sure that I'm not gonna kill. So I'm gonna start with um, the giant rattle poppies and I'm just gonna start on this end and I'm just gonna put one or two seeds in each of these little peat pots. I mean, you get tons of seeds with this stuff anyway. So at least this way, I'll have germination. Poppy seeds, they like to um, be on the surface and grow in the sun. So I'm just gonna tap these down in here. Um, maybe I'll just throw a couple more in here for good measure and put the rest back in my packet. So that first section is giant rattle poppy and I'm just gonna label that.
just by putting one of these plant label sticks just right here on the side of the box. The next row I'll label there, etc., all the way up. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to just put the different um, seeds in the different rows and make sure that I have some in each one. I'm probably overseeding, but I have a million of these little poppy seeds, so it's not the end of the world. The second row, the florist pepper box. And I do realize that these, um, Little peat pellets are rather small, but it's not gonna really matter in the end. Most of these are gonna be able to be, by the time they come up outside, it'll be the right temperature just to move the transplants to the ground. They're not gonna have to get absolutely huge in here, which is good. And actually, that's assuming that this method of planting works. Um, most people who do winter sowing, in fact, I've never seen a winter sowing video where people use peat pellets in these trays. Especially, I think one reason is that the tray on the bottom doesn't drain at all. Um, my top piece for this does have holes in the top. And when I put the two together, they should hold the moisture in very, pretty well. But I'm going to actually have to keep these on my deck and check on them on a regular basis to make sure that they don't dry out. I want them to stay cold but moist the entire time. Okay, so I finished putting all of my poppy seeds in here and I put, tamped them down into the soil. Poppy seeds are pretty much something that you would want to surface sow. So they don't really want to be buried. So I just tamped them down and I'm gonna put these plastic lids on here. A trick to keeping the plastic lid attached is that I'm just gonna use this lighter, heat up this wire and poke it right through the plastic. It melts right through and then I can use this to just to fold this over and then without really doing any damage at all to my container two little pieces of wire and my lid isn't going to just come falling off in the wind it's going to stay right where it needs to be which is going to be very helpful for me because this lid isn't gonna come off until the spring. I am gonna go ahead and put, these trays came with these little vent lids and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here. And I'm gonna close the vents to hold all of the moisture in because these are just gonna go out on my deck where I'll show you, hold on just a second. Let's switch the view. Well, let's turn this off and start it. So where I'm gonna put this tray of seeds is actually out here on my deck. Now, the deck is covered in corrugated plastic, so no rain usually falls here, but it's gonna be nice and cold. Out here already is the zinnias, not zinnias, sorry, he would never start zinnias this way. But these are the, um, the cone flowers that I started last week. And all of these things should sit here nicely and stay nice and moist until they feel like coming up in the spring. Okay, well, sewing in heat pellets or sewing in containers in the winter isn't the only way to do winter sewing. 
The reason we winter sow is so that you can give cold stratification to plants that seed themselves. So what I'm going to do is I have a plenty of other seeds that I plan on winter sowing directly into the ground out here. Um, and I'm just going to do two right now as an example and then I'll mark them and just show you what I'm doing and then later on today or tomorrow or another day what I'll do is I'll give you a tour of all of my little white flags and the things that I attempted to plant. Um, right now I have some hollyhock seeds. Hollyhocks reseed themselves really well and so I'm gonna plant a few next to this fence over here and I'm gonna mark them with flags. As you can see I've labeled these flags with the names of the hollyhocks. So I'm gonna plant a few right over here and mark them so that I don't pull them up as weeds and we'll see what happens. Of course, doing this and holding on to a camera at the same time is another thing. I wonder if I can get this thing to stand up here. There it is. Now these would typically grow by just putting themselves into the ground and just dropping out of the plants themselves. So I'm just going to take a couple. I don't want to use all of my seeds this way, but I'm just going to say I'm going to get three of these Indian spring hollyhocks. And I'm going to just kind of put them here in the ground where they'll be a little bit moist. Just put one there. It's really mulchy here. I have um, a couple of different, well, many inches of mulch here. So these are Indian spring hollyhock. I'm just gonna mark them like this so that I know they're here. I'll just put the flag down there out of the way. And I'm gonna do the same with these other hollyhocks. These are called night watchmen. We'll just plant these over here. Why not? Just get, use this walnut to clear a spot. And put one, two, three. I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to the depth or anything of the planting. I'm just trying to mimic what would have happened if they just grew here naturally. Whether it works or it doesn't work, we'll find out. But, you know, a lot of the stuff I do in my garden ends up being rather experimental. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to plant many other things this way as we go through the rest of winter. Just not going to do it all on the same day. So, I have a lot of space, as you can see, to plant things. There's going to be more echinacea planted over here. I have a lot of iris and other plants already in here. But we'll find out what's here when it grows this spring. Well, thanks for joining me today on my winter sewing project. Hopefully, um, it turns out okay. And if not, well, You'll get to see the success or the failure, however it turns out. All of my gardening is an experiment and it's all fun. I just like to see things grow.